Welcome to Normal Distribution Calculations Part 3 with Berkey Academy. So if you have your normal distribution table out and your calculator out, here we're going to solve the most difficult, it's not, it's not ridiculously difficult, but, but probably as complicated as these normal distribution problems can get. And instead of a forward problem, this is a version of what I call a backward problem. And so let me set up the kind of problem as I did at the end of the last video. Suppose I gave you a probability. So instead of a forward problem is given an x find a probability, in a backward problem I give you a probability and ask you to find x. So a backward problem given some sort of probability. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to have a probability that's in the middle. So given a probability, find x. That's the general backward kind of problem. But here we're going to be finding two x's. So let me erase the steps for the, back, for the forward kind of problem and let's rewrite them in reverse order for the backward kind of problem. So backward kind of problem, I'm working from four down to one here since it's backward. Um, draw a picture of what you're talking about, and then three, take a less than probability to the table to find a Z, and here we're going to be finding two Z's in this kind of problem. Second, plug the Z into this formula to find your X or X's. So X equals the mean plus Z times the standard deviation. And then one, just go back to your picture and make sure that everything looks like it seems reasonable. So in this kind of problem, <clears throat> here's the problem that's given. If IQ has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, then between what two IQs, X1 and X2, between what two IQs? And these IQs, I want them to be symmetrically distributed around the mean. That means that I want X2 to be the same distance above 100, the mean, as X1 is below 100. Um, and I want 80% of people to be exactly in the middle how can I find those two IQs? Well, here is the logic. Here is the way of thinking about this kind of problem. If 80% is in the middle, how much is not in the middle? Or as we say in the South, in the United States, how much ain't in the middle? Now, why do I say ain't, even though I'm an educated professor? Well, because the term that st statisticians use for the amount of probability that is not symmetrically distributed in the middle, we use the Greek letter alpha for this amount of probability. It's a very common term in statistics, is lowercase Greek letter alpha. And alpha kind of is the Greek letter A, and that stands for how much ain't in the middle. So yes, I know if, if you don't like this teaching tool, then forget it. So ain't in the middle. They both start with A. So alpha in this case is how much total is going to be down here and down here in both tails total. And the amount that's going to be there is 0.2, 20% of the area, 0.20. So let's look at our steps. We draw our picture. We've got that. We figured out how much is in the middle. That's going to be given in the problem. 20% is not in the middle or ain't in the middle. What we need to do is take a less than probability to the table because most normal distribution tables are cumulative. You have to take a less than probability. So what are we going to take? Here, let me draw this other area, arrow over here. Well, if 20% is the total that's not in the middle, then tell me how much is going to be on this side and how much is going to be on this side. Well, if it's symmetric, it's going to be half of alpha. And so half of alpha, alpha over 2 in other words, this is a very common concept. Walk up to any statistician and say, hey, alpha over 2. They'll know exactly what you're talking about, as silly as that sounds. 
So alpha over 2 is 10%, 0.10, and the other 10% is going to be here. Why do we care about that 10%? Well, that is the less than probability we're going to take to our table to find the z-scores for both of these x's. It's going to be the same z-score except this is negative and this one's going to be positive over here. Let's go to our table and find as close as we can to 0 0.10. And let me just add a couple of zeros because our table is going to have lots of digits. So let's go to our z table here and let me start by zooming out. And again, if you need this, go to my website www.berkeyacademy.com, click on files, and this will be called norm tab, N-O-R-M-T-A-B, and it's a PDF. So what we want to do is uh, look up the negative version of the z-score. And negative z-scores are on the left side of the table here. here. Let me move this a little bit so it'll be easier for us to see everything as I zoom in. And so the probabilities are in the middle of the table. We're going to hunt for 0 0.10 in the middle to find the z-score. And the z-score will be listed out on the outside of the table here. So again, my technique is to start at the top in the middle column and run down until I get something kind of close to 0 0.10. And I go down and down, and there we're getting close. And then I start moving left to right and try to see if I can get closer. So that's 0 0.1056, 1038, we're getting closer, closer, closer. That's pretty close. 0 0.1003 is pretty close to what we're looking for. And there's not anything else in this table that's closer. So what z-score is that going to be? Well, it's going to be negative 1.2, or the first, uh, first whole number in the first digit, uh, first decimal digit. And then we go up to the top column here and we get the next digit, 8. So the z-score we're looking for is minus 1.28, or that's the z-score we found, negative 1.28. So that tells us we don't know this IQ yet, but the z-score for it is minus 1.28. Because of the symmetry in the normal distribution, it's the same shape on both sides, if minus 1.28 leaves 0 0.1000 below, then positive 1.28 is going to leave 0 0.1000 above it, because <clears throat> that's the same shape as that over there. Now, how do we find these two IQs? We use this formula twice, basically. So let me go over here. Let me actually zoom out just a tiny bit here so that I have a little bit more room to, to work. So we know, using this formula, that our two x's, I'm just going to write this as one big formula and then we'll calculate it. x equals the mean 100 plus 1.28 times the standard deviation, 15. Whoops, it's not letting me draw over there. Okay, well, let me just erase that, and I'll write it right here, plus 1.28 times 15. And then the other x is going to be 100 minus 1.28 times 15. So as a shortcut notation, we could just write plus slash minus. We're going to do both of those things. 100 plus 1.28 times 15, and then 100 minus 1.28 times 15. So a quick way to calculate that is to just do the 1.28 times 15, and we get 19.2. And so our two IQs are going to be 100 plus and minus 19.2. Or, this number right here, the, the low one, is going to be subtracting 19.2, and it looks like that's going to be 80.8. And this number up here is going to be 119.2. So that's our method for finding this 
you're given a, a probability that you want symmetric in the middle, and then how much is not in the middle is alpha divided in two, and that's the number you take to the z-score table to find your z-score. That's the probability, half of that alpha. Let's work one more problem using a totally different distribution to make sure that we, we really have this idea. So here <clears throat> is another normal distribution. This one has a mean of 69 inches. This is the distribution of adult men's heights in the United States. The mean is 69 inches and the standard deviation is 3 inches <clears throat> or something very close to 3 inches. So that should just be a double double quote mark there. Sorry, it's hard to draw on this screen. I know my handwriting looks bad in these videos. Please forgive me. So suppose we're given a problem like this. Um, if the average man in the United States is 69 inches with a standard deviation of 3 inches, then 95%, that's going to be the probability in the middle, 0.9500, of adult men are between what two heights? Now, I'm drawing these green lines, and I, I don't know perfectly for sure that I'm drawing these in exactly the right place, but I'm just doing an approximate answer, so I'm not saying that this is going to be below 75. I don't know the answer yet. But between what two heights, x2 and x1, will 95% of adult men's heights be? Well, let's work through our steps. Let's draw our picture. Done. Second, we need to take a less than probability to the table to find our two z-scores. And we're, one's going to be negative, one will be positive, but they'll be the same z-score. Let's use our alpha technique. This is an important technique in statistics. So alpha is the amount that's not in the middle. That's going to be the other 5%, 0.05. What do we do? Well, we divide that alpha by 2 because half of it has to go in the bottom end, half in the top end. So alpha over 2 is 0.025. And that is the number that we're going to use to look up our z-score on the table. And that other 0.025, of course, goes over here. But a less than probability is what we have to take to the table to find the z-score. So, what we're looking up here is going to be the negative version of the z-score. So it's going to be on the left side here. And again, I just start and I run down until I get close to 0.025. Okay, we're close. And let me zoom in there. 0.0256, and then I move left to right to see if I can get 0.025 exactly, or as close as I can get, and there it is, 0 0.0250 exactly. It's not very often that you're going to find the exact number you're looking for, but that's one case where it happens. So let's zoom out to find what z-score that is, minus 1.9. 6, minus 1.96. Let's go back to our picture. So now we know that this z-score is minus 1.96. And because this is symmetric, this is positive 1.96. And now we just need to find those two x's. Just like we did before, we want to use this formula, x equals the mean plus z times the standard deviation. And so we're just going to plug those numbers in. The mean is 69 plus and minus, I made that look like a time sign, my hand was crooked, okay, plus and minus 1.96 because one of them is positive, one of them is negative, times the z-score, I mean, sorry, the standard deviation, which is 3 inches. And 1.96 times 3 is 5.88 inches. So let me slide this down a little bit here. So our two x's are going to be 69 plus and 69 minus 5.88 inches. And now to find those two heights, all we have to do is actually add and subtract that number to 62 and from 69. 
So down on this end, what we're going to end up with is <clears throat> 63.12 .12 inches. 63.12 inches. And that's about 5 feet 3 inches tall. And then on the upper end, we're going to end up with 69 plus 5.88, which is going to be 74.88 inches, which is six, almost 6 feet 3 inches. So 95% of adult men in the U.S. are somewhere between those two heights. And again, this is about as complicated as this kind of uh, normal distribution calculation idea gets. As always, if you have questions or if something was confusing, please leave a comment or uh, question in the comment section below. This is Berkey Academy. Good luck in your studies.